Bienvenidos, familia. We're back here for the one year anniversary since we started planting Russell's garden. If you remember back to the last video, I showed you many examples of rainwater catchment from the roof that's passively irrigating our privacy screen of all evergreen native plants. We have some gray water coming into retention basins that are irrigating our eight fruit trees. This is a small front yard orchard growing off net zero water use. We beautified the space by filling it in with more flowering native plants in order to enrich our ecosystem. And so today I'm gonna to show you how all that is filled in. I'm also gonna show you our rainwater harvesting parkway that we're responsible for. And I'm also speaking to you from our adobe bench that we built from unwanted fill dirt from different construction sites around town. So at the end of this video, you'll see multiple examples of all of these resilient systems that we've been discussing, but one year into their maturity. So we started this garden with either one gallon plants or, or fruit trees in, in three gallon pots. They've just been receiving gray water from the laundry unit, shower, bathroom sink. And you can see now that our fruit trees are about up to my head. These trees would not be able to grow here on their own, but we can supplement their irrigation with recycled water. Around our fruit trees, we've incorporated more native plants because they're beautiful. They belong here. They bring so many benefits to wildlife and the rest of the ecosystem that they stay at the top of the priority list in every landscape. Other than our pathways, we have plant cover that we're still working on filling in, but I'm finally starting to feel like I have the forested front yard that Russell and I imagined when we started this process together. One of the original issues we're trying to strategically combat with our landscape is privacy. This corner lot gets a lot of foot traffic, and so we wanna grow a native privacy screen with a lot of different kinds of native plants. As I said before, they're all passively irrigated with rainwater from the roof. They're highly adapted over hundreds of thousands of years to thrive off of just seasonal uh, rainwater. And we're utilizing that to create a resilient landscape. This bioswale captures the water that comes out of this drain pipe and displaces it around the entire perimeter. And our plants are actually getting to the height where we're starting to see our privacy screen come to fruition. What all of these plants have in common is they're native to California and particularly local to this area. These toyon are growing really fast. After they flower, they put out a red berry, which attracts a lot of songbirds to our garden. In the event that our retention basin overflows, we have an armorized spillway that allows that water to flow back onto the driveway where it would have gone anyways. But between point A and point B, we've utilized thousands of gallons of water every year and I have yet to see it overflow. When the day comes that it overflows, that doesn't mean we're at a loss. This cross street harvests a lot of water, but it also brings with it a lot of contaminants from the road and deposits them into our wetlands and watershed. I wanna show you an idea to mitigate some of that pollution. So again, like, no irrigation here. I planted this in June, and this is all thriving off of water that people use to overwater their lawns and rainwater. All around me are retention basins receiving gray water from inside the house. Those multiple sources of gray water are passively irrigating our small front yard orchard with eight fruit trees. That's essentially net zero water use, creating all of this productivity. The garage is turned into like a hangout spot, but it doesn't have the same kind of uh, insulation as the rest of the house does. So we also have all this green cover providing a layer of shade on the hottest part of the house during the hottest part of the day. And that's another way that landscape can contribute to like the energy demand of the house. This backyard section was much more recently planted. The gutter section on both sides of the patio combine and displace water from this downspout 
and into the storage tank. We also have a gravity release timer on this tank that deposits that rainwater into retention basins where we have our fruit trees planted. And if the tank overflows, it overflows into this larger retention basin. The soil we excavated was then used to elevate our pathways. And on either side of me, I have edible plants like artichoke. I have native plants like these juncus and sunflower bush. Right in this area, we have a retention basin that receives water directly from the tank on a timer. And we also have an overflow basin and an emitter on this citrus tree. And in this small area, we have a lot of edible herbs, artichoke, mandarins, lime, and other native ground cover and shrubs. In our follow-up video, you're gonna see a larger canopy forming, more shrubs filling in along our pathways, and ground covers filling in the rest of the areas. Thanks so much for coming back one year after planting to check out this landscape. I'm really impressed with how our fruit trees and our native shrubs have filled in to either provide food or privacy for the household. It's incredible how resourceful we can be with a little creativity and imagination. If some of these ideas make sense to you and you can see them implemented in your landscape, reach out to Elemental Designs. Me and the team would love to help you put those ideas into practice.